so hey guys and welcome back to the channel it's chilo here <laughs> once again as always so today's video i just want to go right into the video because i don't want this video to be long at all but if you see me for the first time my name is chioma aka chilo i'm a nigerian and i'm currently living and studying here in japan and i've been in japan for four years i just try to share some sneak peek here and there of my experiences having lived in japan for that long so today's video i'm going to be sharing with you the things that surprised me or that shocked me about living in japan or like the things that i saw and it took me aback i'm like ah, are you serious i have quite a number of those things but i just tried to narrow down today's video to just three just three things just three things that i feel like came to the top of my mind when i decided to shoot this video today now having said that guys i want to ask you guys for a favor a lot of times you guys watch my videos you know interact with me in the comment section tell me oh you just tell me oh i loved your video and stuff like that but you forget to like the video share the video subscribe turn on your notification bell and things like that are what helps the algorithm to like pick up my videos and recommend it to a larger audience and that's very important to every content creator so take a minute to pull a cushion relax and listen <laughs> so just take a minute guys and help me to just like this video if you enjoy it trust me i'm all for if you enjoy it let's get right into this video three things that surprised me or that still shocks me yeah truth be told some of them i think still shocks me but that still shocks me about japan you know as a whole their policies or just their way of life <laughs> The very first thing is going to be the driving etiquette here, yeah, like the policies or just the driving etiquette. So now if you've ever visited Japan before or you know anybody that has visited Japan before, one thing that I'm going to tell you is that Japan Japanese people are very strict about um, you know, driving, the speed, um, obeying the rules, obeying the this. They don't just did don't just dish out driver's license like a convenience store that is sharing sweet or something so they are very particular about their drivers and people that make use of the road with the driver seats one of the things that is a ripple effect of their meticulous nature is the whole no drinking and driving see i don't know how japan has been able to so instill this thing so much so that they don't even try to it's not a case of oh because i will see police on the road that's the reason why i will not drink and drive or it's not even a case of oh because um do you understand there's this self-consciousness that the average japanese person has as long as you started driving in japan so a typical example is when we go out for lab outing in the lab right a lot of times my prof or my stamp professor just anybody that drove to school they will not bring car and when i'm like oh, why didn't you bring your car they're like oh because i'm surely going to drink so i won't drive back do you understand what I'm like they are that strict about no drinking and driving such that it's it's like it's a moral that even when nobody's watching you unconsciously the average japanese person does it but what surprised me is that they smoke and drive they smoke and drive <laughs> and it's surprising because back at home in nigeria you're not allowed to drink and drive and you're not allowed to smoke and drive so i'm thinking in my head okay you are very very meticulous and so conscious about not drinking and driving but i've seen quite a number of people smoking and driving and i'm just thinking in my head like i, I don't understand it like is this not also against the rule please if you're living in japan feel free to correct me in case maybe i'm wrong and i'm probably just seeing people that people that are breaking the rules but genuinely with the frequency i've seen it i've seen quite a handful of people that smoke and drive with the frequency i've seen it i feel like it's allowed and so it just gets me thinking like drinking and driving is not allowed but smoking and driving is allowed am i missing something here so please people should explain it to me maybe i'm missing something maybe smoking doesn't intoxicate i don't smoke i don't drink maybe smoking doesn't intoxicate maybe drinking like just explain it but it's something that really really surprised me living in japan give another example let me let me throw it to nigeria 
There was this time I went to, is it Oju Elegba or Suru Lirisai? So I used to live in Yaba and there was a time I got this job at um, Agu, Agu, Aguda, Aguda side or so, Suru Lire side. So on this day, I think I was on my way to work or so, I saw this um, traffic people also pursuing one car, like the way they were pursuing that car. Eh? So my boss passed um, beside the car that they were pursuing and i found out that why they were pursuing the guy was he was smoking in the car and driving so that's how much it has been instilled into me that i think smoking and driving drinking and driving is on the same level but maybe there are cigarettes here it's from our cigarettes i don't know but i feel like it's allowed here or maybe it's not allowed and people are just breaking the rules so that's the very first point the second point is the hospitals now what am i trying to say when it comes to technology, please give it to Japan. I'm not even going to doubt it. When it comes to integrity, give it to Japan. When it comes to diligence, I beg, give it to Japan. Don't even argue it with them. When it comes to commitment to work and your job generally, give it to Japan. But I don't understand how... <laughs> okay, I don't understand how in Japan, the clinics, like the ones that are not like the biggest teaching you know how in nigeria we have teaching hospital but aside those biggest hospitals you have private hospitals you have clinics you have you just have other you know health centers here and there aside the very because it's not necessarily everything that you will now carry yourself as a teaching hospital because of the queue it's the same thing here in japan they have the very big hospitals in every city right every city have the very big hospitals and then they still have the private hospitals but tell me why private hospitals sometimes you go they say they are closed you go sometimes they'll tell you um today is wednesday and they don't open my idea of hospitals is that hospitals are supposed to be open 24 hours at least 24 active hours of the day now i'm not saying i'm not implying doctors should work 24 hours there's there's a very clear difference here now how nigeria how we do it in nigeria is the hospital is open up 24 hours right almost 24 hours but it's not the same doctor so they have shift doctor this if you come in the morning you mostly see this doctor you come in the afternoon you mostly see this doctor you come in the evening you most like they rotate it in such a way that um, the doctors are not overworked, but at the same time, the hospital is not shut down, it's not closed. Because, I mean, when it comes to health matters, does health know that today is Sunday, today is Saturday, today is weekend, today is Wednesday, today is public holiday? Health does not know that one. Now, when this thing really, really got to me, and this is, this is why it looks like it's very personal, was 2019. So I'm trying to give examples for all the points that surprised me. <laughs> In 2019, guys, I was very, very sick and I went to the hospital one of the days and I didn't hear, oh, you don't know, today is Wednesday now, private hospitals, I be had even put it, shy was not open. And I'm thinking in my head, is it just one doctor that is in the hospital? Like, so I do not understand this particular one because my sickness was, you know, coming and going and all. So it also prolonged into the golden week okay golden week is the longest and most popular holiday in japan and i was sick and i spoke with someone in my african association and he goes oh it's a holiday are you sure the hospital will open have you tried to call first and i'm like the hospital also go from <laughs> also go on holidays and he was like because person has been living in japan for almost 30 years the man was like yes those that if you really want to be attended to during the holidays or season and all you have to call 911 like emergency ambulance to take you to the big hospital and i was like i don't understand so the person was trying to tell me that there are only two ways you can go to the very big hospitals Re number first way is referrals from the private clinic so let's say i have a doctor that i go to now a man feels like it's beyond his control he would refer me like to the teaching hospital something like that so that's one way the second way is it's an emergency and it's ambulance that brought you wing on wing on wing on wing on do not attend to you and i asked a question that day i'm like so if i'm having headache or fever and the clinic close to me was supposed to, is capable of handling it but the clinic is now closed i will now call 911 i'll call ambulance 
that will not take me with headache to the digital hospital. And he said yes. And let me tell you the truth. That's what happened with someone I know. Yes, she was not feeling so far and we had to call ambulance. So I think with the hospital thing, I still do not get it. If you're living in Japan and you get it, please help me in the comments. Because I know someone sent me a mail um, sometime recently. The person was telling me that, is it he or she is a nurse here in Japan? The person is African. So just in case you're watching this video and you're here in Japan, even if you're not a medical practitioner, but you kind of get this thing or maybe you what I heard is wrong. Please tell me in the comment section. So that's that. That's the second point. Hospital policies or medical policies. I don't know how to put it. <laughs> and then the last point, which is the third point, is language. Language proficiency or will I say language fluency or will I say language usage? Now what do I mean? Before coming to Japan, I think this one is more of a um not so exposed issue like i wasn't japan was the very first country i have visited outside nigeria so in nigeria our official language is english so we are taught in english from kindergarten from crash like you're taught in english up until university even to your postgraduate or whatever level you want to go to so it's almost like nigeria is like it's our native language and then i come to japan and yeah japan doesn't speak you know fluent english which okay makes sense but i was thinking in my head that if you don't know a language you don't know a language do you understand like if you say you don't know english that means you don't know anything about english if you say you don't know japanese you don't know anything about japanese but i came to japan and i found out that you hear someone say oh i write Jap i write english but i can't speak english I speak English, but I can't write English. I read English, but I can't speak English. And it took me a while now that it is happening to me with Japanese language because I seemingly can hear a bit and speak a bit, but I cannot write, except I'm using Romaji. So now I understand, but then I'm talking about, this one is something that surprised me then. If, if, you, if you've in any, at any point in your life read a Japanese paper, journal, publication, or just something that was written by a Japanese author or professor, you would see that they write very good English. So when you see that kind of very, very good English, you'll be wait, wondering like, why are you saying you can't speak? Why are you saying you can't hear? This your English is so nice. So that's something that I really, really struggled with when I first came because I didn't understand how you cannot speak, but you can write. So just last week or last two weeks or but just very recently, I had this conversation with a lab member in the lab and I asked him between reading, speaking, listening and writing when it comes to English, which one would you say is the easiest for Japanese people? And I think he said writing because they are taught to write something in that line, but they don't really speak. They don't have people they like practice speaking with, so they don't really do well with speaking. So I'm like, okay, it kind of makes sense. When you hear a Japanese person speak, like talk to you guys have watched some of my friends here on this channel that I have, you know, featured or collaborated with. When you hear them speak like that, you probably think, okay, this person will not be able to write or listen or do anything. It will shock you. It will shock you that that person will be writing very, very clean Queen's English more than you. It shocked me. The correction master professor corrected me something I had written. Ah, I was like, hey, wait, Chuba, are you sure you even know this English at all? Like, at all, at all. It was so good. So, he will even tell you, he's even very quick to tell you things like, what you're writing is, what you're writing is spoken English, not written English. The, this verb you use is for spoken English. And it's a problem I think I noticed with English speakers, this and that. So, actually, there's a very, very, like, there's a very big demarcation between speaking, reading, listening. So, yeah. These are the three major things that I just thought to pop in here and share with you guys. Tell me which one surprised you because generally if I'm watching a video like this, I already know the one that will surprise me if I was not in Japan. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really enjoyed doing this mini chat with you guys. Have a very nice weekend ahead and see you next time on Chilo Talks. Bye for now guys.